Bomb. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Kakudash. The Bible honestly, the Apostle Edel's great most of the well, peace, and blessed to you, like the Jesuit. Shalom, and above all, back at it when the less to the spirit of power of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Lord willing, this video is edifying. Okay? And uh, this is just a lesson right here going into the constant chattering of these demons, man. Constant chattering of these spirits, you know? For you uh, members of the fl uh, flock out there, <clears throat> You sincere brothers, you sincere sisters, the men, women, and children of Yahweh Bashem El Shai is elect. You know, you gotta understand that you're not the only one going through whatever type of trials, tribulations you're going through. Satan is messing with all of us according to our own portion. You see, and even to take it a step further, we have certain hells or certain hell that we're catching, certain afflictions that we're going through. Other brothers or sisters are going through the same thing that you're going through. So you're not alone, okay? And ultimately, I made a lesson on this before, but I also want to mention it again. Some afflictions that you go through are so that you can help build up other members of the flock when they go through it, who might not be as strong as you in the faith. You know, the Lord knows your spirit. He knows what you can bear. First Corinthians 10 and 13, the Lord said, He will not tempt us above what we are able See, but will with the temptation also make a way that we can escape, that we may bear it. So Yahweh Bashem Shai gives us what we can handle, man. Right? So at the end of the day, you know, you might be able to bear something, okay, to where another member of the flock might go through it. And through your past experience, you know how to maneuver through that circumstance. <clears throat> You'll be able to strengthen a different member of the flock who might be weaker than you in the faith. And there's nothing wrong with you being weaker than another brother in the faith or another member of the flock in the faith. You know, because we all have our own lot. We all have our own portion of the spirit. We all have our own measure. So, you know, but, um, you know, of course, constantly we want to seek to build up our faith, you know, constantly, 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 constantly want to seek to build up our faith because scripture said, just shall live by faith. You know, let me get that real quick. Uh, Habakkuk or chapter 2 verse 4 or Habakkuk 2 verse 4 Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him But the just shall live by his faith That's right So That's talking about Esau Edom Right But the scripture says the just shall live by his faith So well, that's what we're standing on We're standing on faith Okay We're not standing on you know anything else Save faith in Yahweh Bashem Of course the scripture says faith without works is dead So if you believe I should say, we believe, therefore we speak. So if you believe, you're going to back up your faith with your works. You're going to practice what you preach. But it's of the Lord's grace and his mercies that he has given us the spirit to, you know, keep doing keep doing the things that are pleasing in his sight, to keep pushing for him to have mercy on us. All right? It's not of our own works, you know, lest any man should boast. Okay? Because really, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags anyway. So if you wanted to base this solely off works, man, we're coming up short, for sure, for sure. That's why we needed Yahweh Shai to die for us. But <clears throat> another beautiful thing is Yahweh Shai, he, he was that perfect sacrificial lamb because he was tempted too. He went through trials and tribulations, yet he was without sin, man. So that's another thing of comfort, man. Yahweh Shai, he went through temptations as well. Satan tried Yahweh Shai. Satan tried Peter. Satan will try us too, man. You know, if, we, if we're claiming that we're of the Lord, Satan is set up to prove it. Okay, scripture say when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for temptation, man. Sirach 2 uh, 1 through 5. Okay, set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Make not haste in the time of trouble, man. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at that last end, man. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. All right, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, man. So we have to constantly be believing in Yahweh Bashem Shai because you know that's the only way. The only way to get through all this tribulation Because you can sell yourself short And sell out to Esau Take a bag and think that you're living more comfortably Or whatever the case might be But at the end of the day Can you still escape the Lord's hand of judgment Even if you do that? No you can't man No matter how much money you have Or how much money you don't have You can't escape the Lord's hand Alright You need uh, the mercy of Yahweh by Shemel Shai You need all that but nonetheless, not to ramble too much. It's uh, 
of Romans 1 and 17, for therein is the righteousness of the Most High revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Right, the just is living by faith, man. That's what we're standing on. We're standing on our faith. So the, the, the job of these demons is to overthrow it. Okay? So you got to keep it at all costs. You know, like Scripture say, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. The heart representing your mind. So we have to constantly have our minds fixed on the righteous ways of Yahweh Shemashiach and guard it from the unfruitful works of darkness. Like it says in Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. All right. So that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, but nonetheless, let me get this precept. This is uh, Galatians three and eleven. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of the Most High. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. That's right. It's evident that the just is living by faith. Man, we're standing on our faith. Yeah, how much shall shine. Hebrews 10 and 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You see, so if you don't have the faith in Yahweh Shemeshai, the Lord is not taking pleasure in your soul. That's why the scripture says in Hebrews 11 how it is impossible to please the Most High without faith, man. Okay? So we need faith in order to be pleasing in the sight of Yahweh Shemeshai. But that's why them demons are constantly trying to overthrow your faith. Them demons are constantly trying to make you think that the Lord is not with you. The Lord doesn't have mercy on you. Make you think that Yahweh Shai's uh, sacrifice isn't sufficient enough for you. You're never going to be of the elect. You know, you're not a man of the Lord or you don't believe in the Lord. You know, all that. But you have to learn to just filter it all through the, through the precepts, man. Okay, because that's what them demons do. They try to make your faith shipwreck. All right, but you have to make sure through the spirit, you know, well, we have to make sure, because it applies to me too, that we're constantly keeping the faith, man, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how crazy it might seem. Because in these last days, when we approach Jacob's trouble closer and closer, it's going to seem like happy faith is irrational to, to the natural man. You know, it's going to seem irrational to not submit to the beast system, take his mark, you know, and, and, and move on faith in your house and live off the grid. That's going to seem irrational to the, to the natural man. But, hey, to, to, to the elect of Yahweh Shemel Shai, it makes perfect sense. But that's going to take faith to live in these times. It's going to take faith to do that. So you got to make sure that, you know, when you're battling these evil spirits, all right, do the opposite that the, that, that the demons want you to do. The demons want you to move in the flesh, move in the spirit. Uh, Galatians 5 and 16. This I say, then walk in the spirit, and each shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Rough and paraphrasing. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. Call Lamb and Bashem Shai. All right? And these are contrary the one to the other, man, so that you cannot do the things that you would. So by nature, your flesh wants to go a certain way. But you have to have that Holy Spirit of discipline within you to know, all right, let me not do that. Let me move this way. Okay? The Lord rather me do this. You know? And of course, sometimes you fall short. Sometimes the flesh does win. That's why the Apostle Paul said, Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Roughly paraphrasing. But Yahweh Shai, he's the one who's going to deliver us from this body of death, man. That's why we're waiting. That's what we're waiting on. That's who our faith relies on. You see, we can't save ourselves. Neither can we save the person next to us. The Lord is the ultimate Savior. But, anyways, you know, also, what does the scripture say? Uh, Romans 5, or it's like Romans 8 and 5. 7, how that a carnal mind is enmity with the Most High, it's not subject to the law of Yahweh Shemashai, neither indeed you can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh Shemashai, so ultimately, when you move into the flesh, you're not moving in the ways of the faith of the Lord, then guess what, you're not pleasing in the sight of the Lord, man, and that's what them demons want, they want you to not be pleasing in his sight, they want you to get destroyed, <laughs> they want you to lose the faith, man, but what did Yahweh Shai tell Peter? Because Yahweh Shai was also tempted, man. Just like how we are tempted. It tells you in the book of Hebrews. He said how he was tempted in all points, but yet without sin. All right, it also says how, uh, you know, well, the Spirit don't want me to roughly paraphrase it. Neither do I. I'll read it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting, but I don't want to roughly paraphrase it. It's uh, Hebrews 2, starting at... Um, Verse 14, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Right. 
because scripture say how the wages of sin is death. Scripture also say in Wisdom of Solomon, second chapter, through envy of the devil came death into the world. I'll read it real quick. Spirit of Solomon, read it. Wisdom of Solomon 2, starting at verse 23, it says, For the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. That's right. That's what the sons of Adam were set up to be, immortal. Through the image of Yahweh Shai, which is his word, his uh, doctrine, his way of life, his philosophies, right? But what happened? And we're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to that. And we're, and we're on our way back to that right now. When we keep serving the Lord, we keep seeking Yahweh Shai, keep seeking his wisdom and turning away from the ways of evil. Verse 24, it says, Nevertheless, through envy of the devil, came death into the world and they that do hold of his side do find it that's right so pretty much if you're cleaving onto the ways of satan you're gonna lead you're gonna lead onto the ways of death right uh scripture saying proverbs the eighth chapter all them that hate me love death and that was talking about the spirit of wisdom so if you hate yahweh Mashai, you hate his wisdom you hate his righteousness that ultimately means you love death. Scripture says you can't serve two masters for you, but hate the one or love the other. You can't serve the most high man. So you have to understand that this is the condition of the battle. The Lord said, choose, uh, choose you this day. Or the Lord put, put it on Joshua's spirit to say, choose you this day who you will serve. You know? What did Joshua say? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Joshua's end was blessed. You see, so we follow in his footsteps, our land is going to be blessed too. All right, scripture also say, uh, I said before you, Lord put the spirit on Moses and say this, I said before you, life and death, uh, blessing and a curse. Okay, good and evil. Choose good or choose life that you may live, man. And what's choosing life? Choosing the ways of the discipline of Yahweh Shemel Shine. That's going to lead to the ways of life. But nonetheless, like I said, Yahweh Shai was tempted to. So let's go ahead and get that precept. Hebrews 2 and 15, it says, And deliver them, I'll read 14 again. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death that is the devil verse 15 and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage okay since for verily he took not on him the nature of angels but he took on him the seed of abraham I'm going to show you how shai came in the flesh I'm going to show you how shai he was an israelite all right of the sons of abraham isaac and jacob okay it says, Wherefore, in all things that behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to the Most High, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Okay? Verse 18. It says, For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Right? So, Yahweh Shai, he was tempted as well. So, he's able to succor us or support us to aid us. When we are tempted, man. All right? Let's get another one. This is in the book of Hebrews 4 and 5. It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's right, man. So, Yahweh Shai, he was tempted as well, but yet he is found without sin. Yahweh Shai brought this on that we be found without guile and without sin in the presence of the Lord, justified through the blood of the Lamb, which is his Son, okay? And we're tempted too, but we have to fight those temptations. Scripture says, fight the good fight of faith. So part of fighting the good fight of faith, man, is, is, is knowing the constant chattering of them spirits, man, <laughs> and learning to filter it through the spirit of Yahweh Shemeshach, to filter it through the scriptures, okay? And uh, don't give up, man. Don't lose hope in your house by Because that's what the demons want you to do. Get a precept to back it up. Luke 22, starting at verse 28, it says, Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. I want to show you how I was tempted as well. And I appointed to you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink. 
at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. So that's the reward when we endure the temptation. Let's sure say, blessed is he that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So we're going to receive the crown. We're going to eat at Yahweh's table. We're going to be a rulership with Yahweh ultimately. All right. But we have to endure these temptations like how Yahweh had to. Scriptures say that if we want to be joint heirs with Yahweh we must suffer with him. You know, if we want to reign with Yahweh we must suffer with him. Okay. That's what the scriptures say. All right. So this is a part of our sufferings. It's, uh, Lord, verse 31, and the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. You see, so that's what happens. Satan wants to take us out to faith. He says, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. What did Yahweh I pray for? He prayed for that our faith didn't fail, man. It says what? And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren, man. Yeah, so certain things you go through is to strengthen other brethren. All right? Just like Yahweh was tempted, we're tempted too. So we're not going through it alone. And when them demons are constantly chattering, trying to throw you off, trying to overthrow you, because a demon uh, really goes back to uh, daemon, all right, which means uh, genius, okay, or intelligence. And that's what them demons do. They play on your mind, you know, and they play on your and they play on your carnality. You know, this is a Sirach Ecclesiastes 37 and 13. It says, and let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. And what is the counsel of our heart? Ultimately, you know, when our spirit is starting to condemn us or we're doubting, like you say, uh, he that he that doubteth, he that eateth and doubteth is damned if he eat, man, because he eateth not with faith. The just live by faith. So them demons try to overthrow your faith. So when you feel like you're doubting or your heart is condemning you in a matter, you know, you want to make sure that you double check and make sure that, you, you know, you like you say, bless the man who is, who, who is not condemned in the thing which he allowed for, if you paraphrase it, because you might be doing something that's lawful, but if you are, are doubting or you feel condemned in your spirit, you do it and you do it, that's a sin unto you. So them demons could get the one up on you because you sinned, you went off. So now your spiritual immune system is weakened. All right. Sin is our kryptonite. So demons are constantly trying to take away our faith because our faith is what protects us from penetration in the spirit. And when you sin, when you go off, it messes with your faith. It diminishes your faith. So then it it, it messes up your spiritual immune system, so to speak, or like spiritual defense. That's why faith is likened unto what? A shield. A shield of faith. That's one of our spiritual uh, armory, right? So nonetheless... You know, we want to constantly guard our faith, man, in Yahweh Shai. And how you do that is really doing what's right to right by the Lord to the best of your ability. And believing in Yahweh Shai. But like it says, let the counsel of thine own heart stand, for there is no man more faithful unto thee than it. So if you have a gut feeling in your spirit, like maybe I should do this, maybe I shouldn't do it, follow it, man. You know, because you're because like it says, verse 30, verse 14, Sirach 37, 14. For a man's mind is sometime wont to tell him. More than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower. You see? So your mind is constantly running. Muse, like says Wisdom Solomon 9, the mind, the uh, earthly tabernacle, press it down against the spirit. Let me get that real quick. Um, Wisdom Solomon 9. Starting at um, 9, it says, And wisdom was with thee, which knoweth thy works, and was present when thou madest the world, and knew what was acceptable in thy sight, and right in thy commandments. O, send her out of thy holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory, that being present, she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. You see, so we need the Lord's wisdom in order to do what's pleasing in the Lord's sight in this flesh. It says, For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. This is talking about King Solomon being king over Israel behind King David. But guess what? You know, we're, we're spiritually sitting in our father's seat or being able to sit in our father's seat by being joint heirs with Yahweh. Okay? And, and, and 
and, and if you can receive it through the spirit, you know, King David is, uh, uh, or, you know, he's technically, he's technically our father, if you can receive it, because David is Jacob in the reincarnation. So, you know, the Lord willing, we'd be of the house of David. So, in a spiritual sense, David's technically our father, and in a, in a, a literal sense too, but nonetheless, that, that's if you can receive it, okay? But this is talking about Solomon, if we're looking at it face value. It says, For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High, or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind, that museth upon many things. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth, and with labor do we find the things that are before us, but the things that are in heaven, who have searched out. You see, in thy, in the, in thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. So, for so the ways of men which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. That's right, man. So that's what it is. We need the Lord's Holy Spirit. We need His counsel from above, so that you know we could be sober in our doings, man. And I'm talking about spiritually being sober, you know, because when you're when you're drunken, we, we can take it in the physical sense. When you're drunken, you know, you're staggering. Your discernment is off. To a certain degree, okay, especially when you're drunken with excess, you know your judgment might be off. But when you're sober, you could think clearly, right? So spiritually speaking, when we have the wisdom of the Lord, we could spiritually move and think clearly. We're not like spiritually drunken, you know. Like the Lord said, how our people are drunken, but we're not with wine, because our people are spiritually drunk. But nonetheless, all right. Point being, we need that, man. We need that counsel because because uh, the fleshly the earthly tabernacle the corruptible earthly tabernacle weighed down against the spirit man and the mind is constantly musing upon any many things your brain is constantly processing you know thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of information man so it's like, so it's just like you know how how can you discern when the spirit is telling you to do something and when a demon is just trying to mess with you ultimately it's through the wisdom of the Lord you got to filter it through the scriptures okay. And filter it through the counsel of the Most High. And if you're not sure, ask counsel of a brother, man, who you know to be a, a sincere man of the Lord, who the Spirit is dealing with. All right? But ultimately, it all starts with seeking the counsel of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. That's where, that's the, that's, the, that's the main thing, man. Sirach Ecclesiasticus 37 and 15, it says, let me read 14 again. For a man's mind is sometimes wanting to tell him more than seven watchmen that sit above in a high tower and above all this pray to the most high that he will direct thy way in truth okay yeah we got to constantly pray to the lord to make our ways pleasing in his sight make our ways according to his truth and his righteousness so that the lord will move us to do the right thing okay because there technically is no free will but you want to make sure that the lord's will for you is to do what's right in his sight it says, let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. Yeah, so before everything you do, always think about the wisdom of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Like Scripture say, how wisdom meeteth thee in every thought. Scripture shall say how in Sirach, a wise man feareth in everything. Okay, in the day of offense, he will be aware, but a fool doesn't observe time. Let me paraphrase it. Scripture shall say how a wise man's heart discerneth or knoweth both time and judgment. Roughly paraphrase it. So you gotta, you gotta constantly be thinking in the spirit constantly be filtering things through the scriptures man okay and that's what happened when Yahweh Shai when Satan tempted him he filtered it through the precepts and Satan will try to hit Yahweh Shai with a scripture but what will Yahweh Shai do when Satan try to twist the scriptures and work on his intelligence and play on his mind Yahweh Shai will filter it through the, through the precepts man the scriptures say through thy precepts I get understanding and the scriptures say precept must be upon precept okay here a little there a little all right that's how you fit the scriptures together. The scriptures is like a puzzle. Some scriptures you are to read chronologically and read straight through, but some scriptures, in order for you to get understanding on a certain precept in one book, you got to go to another precept somewhere else in the sword or further down in the chapter in order to get understanding of what that precept is talking about, man. Because, you know, you could just, a demon could mess with you and you could read one scripture and that demon could be like, yep, this is what that scripture says. Does it not say that? And you'd be like, damn, I mean, it does say that. But that demon isn't necessarily breaking it down to you correctly. That demon is twisting it, twisting it to get you to, to, to prove your heart, to see what you're going to do, you know, to see how you're going to move. 
So you got to learn to know when the demon is trying to mess with you and the spirit is hitting you with a counter precept, so to speak, to be like, nah, that demon's just trying to fuck with me. Let me get my mind right. You know, like when that demon was like, you know, if you be the man, if you're the son of God, make this stone bread, right? Yahushai said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the most high. Right? And then another one that demon said, Oh, if you are the, if you're a son of the most high, uh roughly paraphrasing, um, cast yourself down from the temple. You know, it is written <laughs> that he will give his angel charge over thee, you know, and they, they'll, they'll, they'll catch you up and bury you in their wings, right? But Yahusha said, what? It is also written not to tempt the Lord. So Satan was hitting Yahusha with, with something spiritual. He was hitting him with scriptures, but he was twisting it, man. You see? <laughs> but Yahusha knew how to filter it through the spirit because you got to filter things through the counsel of Yahusha and Shai. Okay, and then another one was uh, saying, was like, hey, look, all these kingdoms of the world has been given to me. Uh, I can give it to you. All you got to do is worship me. Right? And Yahweh was like, get behind me. Satan is written. You shall worship Yahweh, uh, the most high Yahweh, him alone. You know, him only, man. Okay? So Satan was like, all right, he passed the test. I'm out. You know, the Lord took Satan away. Yahweh passed the test. And that's what that's what that was. So you gotta understand that them demons really are just, you know, they're just uh uh they're really just like negative, mean football coaches, man. <laughs> you know, and I say it like that, because you got them football coaches who are hard as hell on you, you know, you would think that they fucking hate you. But when you look at the bigger picture, you're like, hey man, after all this shit this nigga really put me through, it's only making me better. You know, so it's just like the same thing with them demons, you know, them demons. They're trying you, man. Or they're like the, the the TV shows where the guy hires another dude to flirt with his girlfriend to see if she's loyal or not. It's the same concept, man. So them demons, they're going to test you, but they're going to test you in a negative way, man. So you got to know how to pass the test in righteousness according to the truth and the counsel of Yahweh Bashmael Shai. So constantly when you're facing them chatter or them demons, man, just, you know, sit back, take a deep breath and just filter it through the spirit, man. You know, and that uh, story I was talking about was uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter. All right. But um, Lord willing, this video was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem El Shabbat Shemur Kakwadash. Double honor to the Apostle, Elders, Great Muslim, that we will. Peace and blessing to the elect. Shalom and a Baba Ball.